Hey guys, so judging by the comments I've been getting lately, it seems like a lot of you guys seem to want to build your own exoskeleton. A lot of you guys also seem to think that building an exoskeleton can happen overnight. Well, it can't. And it takes a while to design and build an exoskeleton. So for this video, I'm going to try and explain a bit about um, the different ways you could go about building your own exoskeleton at home. So let's start with the basics. What kind of power system are you going to use for the exoskeleton? There's five main ones I can think of. There's pneumatic, hydraulic, servo motors, linear actuators, and mechanical advantage. Each of these different power options offer different advantages and disadvantages. So as you guys know, I've been using pneumatics for pretty much everything up to this point. And that's because they're cheap, they're easy to use, and they're pretty powerful. The problem is, they aren't very accurate. It's very hard to do positional control using pneumatics. It's mostly an on and off movement, so you can lift something up and you can set it back down. But to hold your arm halfway, it's not so easy. I've been working on a little system to use pressure regulation between the two sides of the cylinder in order to give it a rough positional control. It's still not going to be amazing, but at least you'll be able to do some basic control like that. For more information, you can check out my past video right here. Now, I'd love to work with hydraulics. They're about 20 times more powerful the pneumatics, they're fast, and they have very accurate positional control. But the problem is they're very expensive, they're pretty dangerous, and right now it's just out of my project scope to be able to use them. Next up will be servo motors. Now, servo motors would be cool. The problem is they are very, very, very expensive. You see, even cheap servo motors, which are still a couple hundred dollars a pop, only have torques of about uh, 20 kilograms per centimeter. That may seem like a lot, but if you do the physics calculation for torque, you'll realize that 20 kilograms at one centimeter, well that's the same as two kilograms at 10 centimeters, or 200 grams at 100 centimeters. If my arm's 100 centimeters long, that means the X is only going to be able to lift 200 grams, which is nothing. Now there are very powerful servo motors out there, like the ones used in big industrial robots. But again, those are very, very, very expensive. And the other problem with this is, how are you going to power those servo motors? For a slightly more feasible electric approach, you can use linear actuators. These are still DC motors, but they use mechanical advantage to spin a, uh, basically like a worm gear, to slowly move um, and extend the cylinder. They, they look like a pneumatic cylinder, but they're fully electric. The problem is they're very slow. They're very powerful. You can do positional control, but they're very, very slow. And the biggest problem I see with that is if you have it like this, the cylinders are basically locked in position unless they're powered, which means if you wanted the suit to be flexible so you can move around, it's not gonna happen. Finally, we have mechanical advantage. You know how a bicycle works? It uses gears to increase your power output by mechanical advantage. If you could create an exoskeleton to do what the bicycle did for modern transportation, you're set. The only problem is you're not going to be able to do too much with it. Um, realistically speaking, you might be able to get two times your own personal strength, depending how you do it, because you're going to have trade-offs for speed versus strength and whatnot. Um, but it would be very interesting to see how that would go. So for the COD exoskeleton, I'm actually planning a hybrid of the two designs, pneumatic and mechanical advantage. The lower half of the exoskeleton is going to be using mechanical advantage, which will allow the legs to remain flexible so you can still run around, but be able to lock in place so you can take heavy loads without affecting your body. Then the upper body will use pneumatics to allow you to have lots and lots of strength. And that's about it. So I am planning on having exoskeleton updates every week, but um, you guys seem to be really, really curious about exoskeletons and everything. So I wanted to show you some other YouTubers who are actually building exoskeletons right now and have completely different approaches than me. So if you're looking to build an exoskeleton, you should really check out some of these guys. You can click some of the uh, video annotations to learn more. Thanks for watching, and if you want more info on what I was talking about today, head over to my blog. There's a link in the description, and I've got a much more thorough description of the different power systems you can use for exoskeletons.